Welcome to The Basics with Beth. I'm so glad you tuned in because we have been having a blast getting a grip on the basics. For the last number of episodes, we have just been digging into the basics of the Bible and putting our roots down deep and learning just basic things that the Bible tells us about this faith adventure we call the Christian life. So I'm really glad you tuned in today. You picked a good one because we're going to talk about how to live the overcoming life. What does the Bible say about this overcomer's life, this victorious Christian life? And the reason this is an important one is maybe like you, I know for myself, I lived many years in my early Christian life doing the roller coaster thing, living this inconsistent, I would call it at times defeated Christian life. I loved the Lord. I wanted to live for God, but I just felt like so many times I was living the defeated Christian life. And I just thought, well, that's the life. That's how it is. I guess it'll be awesome when we get to heaven, but between now and then it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster ride. Then when I found out what the Bible says, especially in the New Testament, especially since the finished work of Jesus was accomplished and he was raised from the dead and all of the things that he has granted to you and I, all of the authority he has given us in his name, the power of his word, the power of the Holy Spirit. When all of those things began to make more sense to me, man, oh man, the dots connected, just like what we're doing in our time together. And I went from this roller coaster Christian life to a life of consistency and an ever increasing life. Of course, yes, you have a dip here and there when you face some trials, but, but honestly, I can say it's been much more consistent because I learned about this overcoming Christian life. And in fact, let me tell you a quick little story. I remember, I was in this season of seeking God. I was like, God, I need a breakthrough. I just need to hear from you. I need a breakthrough. And I remember I was seeking the Lord about this roller coaster Christian life. And I was hearing, I was hearing rumors <laughs> that some people knew something about a victorious Christian life, a spirit filled Christian life, you know, where there was more consistency. And I remember thinking, God, is that true? And I was praying about it, seeking the Lord. And I was actually moving a friend of mine to Florida at the time. And she and I were driving from Michigan to Florida, and we were going through the mountains of Tennessee and Kentucky. And while we were in the mountains, I was just sort of praying as I was driving. And I was praying and just sort of singing, you know, some worship things to the Lord. And in the middle of that, God gave me a little song. And the song went something like this, partly cloudy, partly sunny. Some days are like that, isn't it funny? And then he went on to speak to my heart to say, you're driving down to Florida under the clouds, through the mountains and the valleys, kind of like your Christian life to help your friend move to Florida. But it turns out you're gonna be flying home on a jet, which I was, and you're gonna be flying above the clouds in the blue sky. And I'm gonna do some things in your life while you're in Florida that are gonna help you to begin to live this victorious Christian life. And it's a long story, but what happened was, while I was in Florida, God began to show me in his word some things about renewing my mind, some things about the, the very subject that we're gonna get into in this lesson in this chapter, some of these overcoming truths. And while I was in Florida during that time frame for about two weeks, God revolutionized my life. Literally, just like Romans 12, one and two says, it says, be transformed by the renewing, the renovating of your mind and prove what God's perfect will is. And I'm telling you, man, as I spent time renewing my mind to God's word and the very things we're gonna talk about today, I, I sensed on the inside, I, I, could, I could feel it happening, a transformation was taking place. And it wasn't just a transformation for two weeks. It was a transformation that still to this day is ongoing. And I, and I literally flew home in a jet, but I also flew home spiritually. And from that point on, I left the roller coaster Christian life and really began to live that ever increasing, consistent, victorious life. Does that make sense? All right. So let's then dig into it. Remember God is on your side. And I want to share with you 11 verses in that season that God spoke to my heart that really set me up for victory. And what I did with these 11 verses, I, I wrote them down on index cards and I put them everywhere in my car, on the mirror, in my bathroom, at my desk at work. I mean, they were everywhere so that I could renew my mind to God's word. Okay. So you ready? Let's do it. Let's get your mind renewed today so that you can begin even more to live this overcomer's life. All right, John 10, 10, you've heard it before. You're going to hear it again. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Before he said that, he gave us a little heads up. He said, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life 
and that you might have it more abundantly. So he's just letting us know, hey, be reminded, if something comes into your life, there is an adversary, there is an enemy, and if he comes in to try to steal, kill, and destroy your joy, your peace, your job, your marriage, your kids, your finances, then just know it's the enemy, it's not the Lord. I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. And I'll never forget, years ago, we heard this phrase, another preacher had said this, but boy, it's so simple and profound, and you got to get your mind renewed to it. It's this, good God, bad devil. God is the good one. He's good all the time. He is not schizo God. He is not good today and bad tomorrow. He is not good today and then somehow hurting you or injuring you to teach you a lesson tomorrow. No, that's not the Bible God. Good God, bad devil. The devil's the bad one. He's the one that tries to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus has given us authority over the enemy and the opportunity to resist the devil and he'll flee from us. And we're going to get into that in this chapter. But we just need to be reminded that God is good and he's good all the time and he's on your side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Got it? That's a little injection right there of faith to encourage you as we dig into this thing. God is on your side. Scripture number two, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Thanks be to God who always, who always does what? Leads us in triumph in Christ. So I want to encourage you. You might be going through something today. You might feel like I am in a dark tunnel and there is barely light at the end of the tunnel. I have good news for you. He always, always, always leads you in triumph. You're going to get through it. You're going to get to the end of the dark tunnel and you're going to come out on the triumphant side. Just stay in faith, believe God, believe his word, believe these scriptures. He's on your side and he always does. There's not a time he doesn't. It's not like, oh, well, 99% of the time he'll lead you in triumph. No. Well, maybe 50-50. No. Always. You just stay close to the Lord and follow his leading. He will always lead you into triumph. You'll know what to do and when to do it. Yay. Does that encourage you? I hope so. Okay. Number three. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God always, again, gives us the victory. You're not on the losing side. You're not on the losing team. He always gives you the victory. And I know sometimes you're in a boxing match, it feels like, and, and you got knocked down a couple of times and maybe you lost a round or two and maybe the enemy, maybe he did steal some things from you in the course of your life. And you feel like, man, I got beat up. I got black eyes. I got a bloody lip. He has gotten a couple of rounds on me. Well, that's what he tries to do until our eyes get opened to understand more about our authority in Christ. And I, like you, got beat up a couple times in a few rounds, but then I got a hold of this verse. Listen, at the end of the fight, you win, you know. He always gives you, Jesus always gives you the victory. At the end, he's going to put your hand up as the victor because you are connected to and in Christ, he's the most victorious one. Can you see that? All right, so three verses so far. Let's go to number four. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay, now we've talked a little bit in our time together, but let me take a little parenthetical here just to remind you of how much God loves you. So many times we forget and we're focused on all the things we're supposed to be doing. But 1 John 4 says, it's not that you loved God, it's that he loved you and gave himself as a propitiation, sacrifice for our sins. We love him because he first loved us. So listen, be encouraged. He always, what does it say? He makes you more than conquerors, yes, through him who loved us. So let's emphasize the him who loved us part first. Because he loves you so much, he is for you. It's not that you loved him. It's not that you lived this Christian life perfectly. It's that he loved you. And because of that, through him who loved us, he has then made us more than conquerors through Christ. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. And I know sometimes you have people in your world, they're not speaking good things to you. Maybe you get beat up all the time with words. Maybe you get put down all the time. Or maybe they're just, maybe you get nothing. 
You don't get built up. You don't get beat up. You just get nothing. Listen, Jesus wants to build you up. He wants you to know you are more than a conqueror. You're on the winning side once again. All right. So how about another one? Number five, first John five verses four and five. Whatever is born of God has overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So what is this telling us? It's saying, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What's the victory that's overcome the world? Wait, I can overcome the world that's coming against me? I can be an overcomer? How? My faith. Who is it that overcomes? It's him who has faith. It is our faith that gives us the victory. Our faith in what? Our faith in all these scriptures I've been sharing with you. Our faith in God's word. Our faith in the fact that he is for you. He is on your side. If he is for you, who can be against you? You get it? It's your faith that gives you the victory. And you've been given the victory to overcome the world. All the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all the strife, all the contention, all the jealousy, all the anger, all the bitterness, all the hate, all of that stuff. You do not have to get sucked up in it and live this roller coaster Christian life. You do not. How do you not do that? Your faith. It's your faith that gives you the victory to overcome. And all the people said, amen. All right. Well, I'm stirring myself up. I hope I'm stirring you up. Psalm 34, verse 19. This is number six. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You might say, amen. <laughs> but the Lord, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Okay. So listen, I'm, I'm not talking about a, a tribulation free life. I'm not talking about the fact that you'll never have any problems. No, because life is, has challenges. We live in a fallen world. There are challenges. We have an enemy. We make dumb decisions. I mean, you know, all of the above, but the good news is this, what? There may be many afflictions, but the Lord delivers you out of them all. I mean, every single one of them. So I want to encourage you. Maybe you're in a bad place because you made dumb decisions. Okay, well, fine. Just own it. God, I just made stupid decisions. Thank you, Lord, for this verse. Even when I make a dumb decision and I have to deal with some of the consequences of my dumb decision, Lord, thank you that you still deliver me out of them all. You're going to show me the pathway to get back on the victory road. Okay, let me tell you a quick story. Years ago, I had a friend. And she'd made some dumb decisions. She made a really bad decision and it was totally affecting her life. In fact, it had gotten her off from the highway, so to speak, of God's will for her life. And she knew she was just off course. And then she had an encounter with God and she really, you know, came to herself, so to speak, and, you know, repented and just said, God, I've messed up. And can you help me? Can you get me back on the highway of your will for my life? And so her and I were talking and she'd taken about a three year detour, been about a three year detour. And so here she is, you know, wanting to come back to what God had, had in mind for her. But then she felt like, oh, I've already blown it so much. I am on such a detour path. There's no way I can get back. I've blown it. I've just ruined my life. No way can God do anything in my life. And we said, wait a minute, wait a minute. All these scriptures I've been sharing with you are true for her too. And so he'll deliver you out of them all. Let's just ask him for wisdom. Let's pray about it. So I said to her, I said, do you believe that while you've been on this detour for three years, do you believe that the Lord could get you back? Maybe you, you were on the highway of God's will. You took an exit ramp that wasn't his plan. Do you believe God can get you back onto an entrance ramp and get you right back onto the highway of his will for your life within a short period of time? Now we know he's not going to do it next week. We know it's going to take a bit of time and you're going to have to make some good decisions. But do we believe within the next short window of time, I think it was like a year or two years. Do we believe within the next two years that you'll be right smack dab right back on the center of the highway of God's will for your life and at the point that you would have been had you stayed on his path all along. Do we believe God can even do that? Do you believe he'll do it for you? And she said, I do believe that. And I do believe he'll do it for me. We said, okay, let's pray. And so we prayed and we said, Lord, she admits she's made some bad choices and she made some mistakes and she took an exit ramp. But we're asking you, Lord, to help her find that entrance ramp, get right back on the highway of your will so that in two years, She'll be right at the exact same point she would have been had she never gotten off the exit ramp. Now listen, nobody can do that except God. He's the only one in his mercy 
in his kindness, in his grace. And because he wants you and I to leave this life and live the overcomer's life, he's the only one that can do that. And do you know, in two years time, sure enough, God had just reorchestrated her whole world and she was right back on the highway of his plan for her. And today, she and her husband, and over the years with their kids, have been serving God and just making such an eternal difference in their sphere of influence. So be encouraged by that. He delivers you from all of your afflictions. How about this one? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, no excuses there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, so I think I won't spend a lot of time on that one because I think you've heard that verse many, many times, but just be encouraged, you can. There's not a thing you can't do. Don't say, I can't do that. Don't say, I don't know how, because you have this verse. I can. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, Luke 137. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I mean, that is a blank check. That's a blank slate. That's a sky is the limit kind of a, kind of a verse. With God, not without God, with God, nothing will be impossible. You know, this is the story of Mary and the virgin birth. That was impossible. There's no such thing as a virgin birth except with God because of his purposes, his plans, his calling on Mary's life and what he was wanting to accomplish with God, nothing's impossible. And for you and I, concerning God's will for your life, concerning God's plan for you, his calling on your life, whatever he's called you to do, listen, nothing is impossible. He knows how to give you divine connections. He knows how to open doors. He knows how to direct your steps, order your steps. I mean, nothing is impossible with the Lord. That's the overcomer's life. All right, what else? Philippians 4.19. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, this is another overcomers verse because you might think, well, I don't have enough money. I don't have the right connections. I don't have the right clothes. I don't have the right house. I'm not driving the right car. I'm, I don't have all these things. Listen, what does this verse say? And my God shall supply all of your needs, whatever you have need of, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. His riches and glory include a lot of things. It's his provision. It's his wisdom. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you ideas. He'll give you the knowledge of witty inventions. He'll give you a, a thought. You should call this person. You should go see about doing an interview with this person or seeing if they have any job opportunities or you need to check into this situation. I mean, so many times I have found over the course of my life as I'm seeking God about something. And I believe this, I believe he meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Sometimes he might say to me, you need to plant a seed to meet that need. Cool, I'll plant that seed. Sometimes he'll say, you need to make a phone call and I'm gonna divinely connect you to so-and-so and that'll be the fulfillment of your need. Sometimes he'll say, you just need to spend more time in prayer and in the word and a set aside time to spend with me and I'm gonna give you wisdom. I'm gonna give you a game plan. Sometimes it's, I mean, there's all kinds of things. In fact, one time I was looking for a job. I just graduated from college and there were no jobs in Michigan. In fact, everybody in Michigan at that time was moving to Texas because literally Michigan was in a big recession. And I thought, boy, it's gonna be hard to get a job. And I just graduated from Boston University. They've got this great degree in communications. I go back to Michigan and my first job was as a waitress. I didn't wanna wait tables. I mean, I learned a lot about being a servant <laughs> and getting no tips, um, <laughs> but that's another service. <laughs> that's another sermon. But what I did learn in that season was how to seek God for him to meet my needs. So one day he says to me, I was like, Lord, you know, how do I, how do I get experience in communications? And I thought at that time, I'd like to work for a TV station in town and learn, you know, more about the mass media world. Of course, little did I know <laughs> that what, 30 some years later, we'd be doing this, but God knew. So anyways, he put this in my mind. He says, why don't you call this gal? She was the uh, community traffic director for this TV station. Call her, not to ask her for a job, call her to interview her. Just go learn. Don't ask for a job, just go learn. And interview her about what she does and how she got into it and any advice she'd have for you and so on. So I called her up, I didn't know her. I called her and said, hey, my name is such and such. Would you be open to an interview? I just graduated from college, but I'd love to learn about this whole world of communications and media and you know mass communications and so on. Well, she was flattered. She was like, sure, I'd be glad to. We sat down for lunch. I interviewed her and I learned a ton. 
really learned a ton. But in that interview, she says to me, you know, I have a friend who does a program at this TV station in town and she's looking for an assistant. Would you like me to reach out to her and just give her your name? And I said, absolutely, man, I'd love it. And she did. And then I got in contact with her friend and she hired me. I ended up working for her friend at this TV station for a couple of years. And I, again, just learned a lot from the assistant side of things about this whole world of communications. What was that? That was God meeting my needs. Did he send a St. Bernard with a big bundle of money around his neck and say, hey, I'm making your needs met. Here's a boatload of cash. No, he didn't do that. Did he send, you know, parachutes down with finances in it? No, he didn't do that. But what did he do? He gave me an idea. He gave me wisdom to have my needs met. Amen. You got it? Okay. That was number 10. Now we're on number 11, our 11th verse to help you and I live this overcomer's life. 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Listen, John, the disciple, the apostle John wrote this inspired by the Holy Spirit and he said, Beloved, I pray. One version says, Above all things, this is what I pray. There's a lot of things I could pray for you, but above them all, this is what I want. This is what God wants for you. Beloved, you're loved by God. Beloved. You who God loves, you in whom he is well pleased, you that he's on your side, you that he cares about. Beloved, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Listen, that is such a great verse for spirit, soul, and body blessings. God wants you now to overcome in our lives, spirit, soul, and body. So I hope you're encouraged. I hope you feel like you're armed and dangerous, dangerous to the devil because you are loaded up with the word, loaded up with what God says about you living the overcomer's life. Make sense? Okay, you ready for one more? Let's go to Romans 5:17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ. So that tells us this ability to reign in life is possible. It exists through Jesus Christ. Who gets to reign in life? Those who receive, and literally the word receive, it's a Greek word, lambano. It means take. It's not passive. It's those who take, those who grab onto, those who receive an abundance of grace. God's riches at Christ's expense, you've heard that. The grace of God, that it is the unmerited favor of God and the gift of righteousness. Those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness get to reign in life. Man, soak in that one, all right? Okay, so you got it. I hope this has encouraged you. Can you see God wants you to live the overcomer's life? And I encourage you to write all these verses down on your own index cards and start meditating. And then I will look forward to seeing you in our next episode. We're going to pick back up and talk about this overcomer's life as we get a grip on the basics. Thanks for watching today's show. We hope this message helped you to get the basics, live the life, and do the stuff. Be sure to set your DVR so that you never miss an episode. For more of the basics with Beth Jones or to watch programs on demand, visit thebasicswithbeth.tv.